Our next guest is a member of a brand new project with a new EP that explores themes of ancestry, fading memories, and the nature of the world around us. Wayfinding's debut performance took place last summer at the Calgary Folk Music Festival, and they have been quickly wowing audiences and building a league of eager fans. The band includes musician artist Cassia Hardy on guitar, drummer and CKUA host Merrick Tyler, Matthew Cardinal on bass and keys, and with me today is vocalist and guitarist Ryan Beatty. Hi, Ryan. Thanks for joining me today. How are you? Good. Yeah, thanks a lot for having me, John. Awesome. So I'm I'm curious, how did Wayfinding find their way to each other? Uh, well, Merrick and myself have worked together in many bands for decades. During COVID, we, we've sort of always been meaning to have our own sort of project at some point. And uh, pre-COVID, he was in town for something and uh, we were at our favorite local haunt, the, the Lido. We were having drinks with our friend and we were like, okay, we're going to have a project. And when she she was sitting there and Merrick paid her a dollar to witness that we were going to uh, start a band within <laughs> the year. And that was right before COVID hit. So anyways, we did naturally what a lot of people did during COVID. A lot of artists where we just started trading files back and forth. Mm. And we came up with the CP. And now it's sort of realized with Cassia and Matthew that's sort of the origins of the project. Very cool. I'm curious, you know, the the band sound is like, it's super eclectic. You know, there's elements of pop and electronica and I don't know, it's very expansive sounding. Where where does Wayfinding find its sonic inspiration? For myself, like I just, it was just a, bit of a process of kind of throwing everything at the wall and seeing what's stuck. And, you know, Matthew is brilliant uh, synth player and just sonically i don't know it just it just kind of came together through a through a collective sonic template i guess yeah and does the band when you're writing together you know is it like really collaborative or it sounds like because it was it was happening in in, during covid it was like one person would send something and, and then someone else would respond to that um like when you are finally all together is it one person ha- bringing in a tune and then you're all working on it together? Or is someone like have a very clear vision from beginning to end and just tells everyone what to do, basically? The the EP was much more like, I mean, I, I'm sort of the principal songwriter, mm-hmm. but the EP was much more, yeah, throwing ideas back and forth through email. Well, I should start because uh, we had an initial session where we all got together and my friend Dan Behar of Destroyer has a studio here mm. that he graciously let's us use and so we did a few sessions there and i think there's a whole other alternate version of all these songs but only one of those ended up getting used subsequently over the course of months and months we're sending stuff back and forth merrick was sending some drum stuff without any music to it and it would inspire you know me to write a song based on that it it was Pretty interesting collaborate, like a new collaborative process for me doing this record. Mm. Uh, but honestly, the we haven't we haven't been in the same room writing yet. But that is actually I'm going to Edmonton tomorrow to ah. <laughs> to start writing uh, a full length. We've got a bunch of songs together and actually going, and everybody's going to be in the room, <laughs> the room arranging the songs together. That's exciting. Um, I don't know if you can hear, but my neighbor through the wall in the apartment adjacent his Amber Weber of of uh, Lightning Dust. I can just hear her practicing some songs. I don't know if it's coming through. Oh, you know what? My that's my favorite thing <laughs> is listening is like just the sounds of people practicing and around me. Like as the day goes on, that's really so exciting and how cool! Yeah. How cool that you have that experience. Yeah. Um, okay, Ryan, I have one more question for you. I would really love to play the track Thomas in a Rick James wig, and I'm so curious, where did that title come from? It's literally about an old friend of mine who have uh, played and toured with Thomas Shields from the band Run Chico Run. It's a song about doing these extended month-long sprawling Canadian tours. And uh, when we were, you know, young and poor and um, <laughs> now we're just old and poor, but it's, yeah, we, know, we know better than, than to do those tours like that anymore. Yeah. It was literally just about this one summer and Thomas had this 
Rick James wig that he'd wear around. It was, it was just a story song, I suppose. Brilliant. Delight. The titles of the songs on this EP are just like, they totally tickle me. Uh, they are so joyful and quirky in a, in a really beautiful way. So from the album oh. Wayfinding, here is Thomas in a Rick James wig. Thank you so much, Ryan, for chatting with me today and uh, can't wait to see you live. Thanks very much.